Uh, what I'm going to do this evening is give a very brief uh, context about immune-mediated neuropathies, then talk a little bit about a specific uh, challenge that I'm sure we've all experienced in our practice of uh, identifying and managing CIDP in patients uh, with diabetes, and then we'll segue into my favorite topic of all, which is multifocal uh, motor neuropathy. Uh, so immune-mediated neuropathies may be primary immune-mediated uh, disorders in which uh, some component of the nerve is the target for the immune attack. Uh, most commonly, it, it is the myelin sheath, but we now are starting to learn uh, that there are antigens, particularly around the, the node, um, but also other uh, as yet unidentified axonal antigens that can be the target for the attack. Uh, now, we tend to forget about the secondary immune-mediated <coughs> neuropathies in which a, a, an attack on um, some non-neural target uh, may result in damage to the nerve as an innocent bystander. And, and by far the commonest of those uh, is vasculitis. So vasculitic neuropathies, it is an immune-mediated disorder of blood vessels that secondarily affects peripheral nerves. Uh, perineural inflammation we tend to forget about, there, uh, it's rare, but uh, there's a condition of sensory perineuritis that may be the same or different from Wartenberg's migrant sensory neuritis, uh, but these are two perineural conditions uh, that can secondarily affect the nerve. And we don't quite know where sarcoidosis uh, fits in, but um, certainly that is um, a, a disorder of the immune system in some way that uh, can affect nerves. And one of the things I've learned in my short time here is it can always be leprosy. Uh, the patient presents with headache, it can be leprosy. Now, it's not quite that bad, but anybody who has neuropathy, you've got to think of leprosy. And in fact, I saw a patient who I thought had uh, Lewis Sumner syndrome, which is uh, a, a multifocal form of CIDP. I was confident the patient had Lewis Sumner syndrome, but I was wrong, it was leprosy, so never forget that possibility. And, and then uh, moving back to the primary immune-mediated uh, immune neuropathies, they may be autoimmune disorders or what I call disimmune disorders. So the autoimmune disorders are those that result from um, a, the, a normal immune response uh, becoming confused and attacking a putative antigen uh, in the nerve. And, and the classic example of that would be GBS. And, and we know, at least in some cases, that this is a process of molecular mimicry. Uh, we know that for Campylobacter jejuni, we know that uh, there is cross-recognition of a, a nodal protein in patients um, uh, who have the post-Campylobacter GBS uh, that interacts with a component of the uh, Campylobacter jejuni code. Uh, CIDP <coughs> is a chronic um, autoimmune neuropathy, and we rarely identify an antecedent event. And that's probably because it develops uh, chronically, and by the time the patient gets to see the physician, they can't really remember any antecedent event that might have triggered it. Uh, but we know less about the molecular pathogenesis of CIDP. Now, disimmune neuropathies are slightly different. These are neuropathies that result from a, a clone of uh, immune cells uh, arising in the bone marrow that produce antibodies that are specific for neural targets. And in some cases, we don't know what the target is. So monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance uh, is known to be associated with neuropathy, nearly always with an IgM protein. But we don't specifically know what the neural target is for most of those patients. And similarly, Pollen's syndrome, in, 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 usually in patients with multiple myeloma, sometimes with solitary plasmacytoma, again, we don't know exactly what the neural target is for most of those patients. And the other side of the coin are those in which we know absolutely what the neural target is. The anti-mag neuropathy uh, targets myelin-associated glycoprotein, a, a protein that is essential for the maintenance of compacted myelin. Uh, and multifocal motor neuropathy that we're going to come back to uh, is a condition that's uh, probably almost certainly the result of antibodies um, against a GM1 ganglioside. And we do have to recognize that, that the separation between what is autoimmune and what is disimmune uh, may break down as we get to understand the immune response better. 